Before the video gets started, remember that I have subtitles for those who are more comfortable learning in another language. We have German, Italian, French, Spanish, and Polish. Hello and welcome to the Demo Gaming YouTube channel. I'm Antonio, and today we'll be sharing our in depth guide on Warwick, the Uncaged Wrath of Zon. Real quick, if you're interested in learning more or you want more tools to help you become a better player, please take a visit to my website. The link is in the description below. We're still working on it and it's pretty bad right now, but uh, we'll, we'll keep improving it. Everything is free, so please enjoy. Alright, so let's get into the guide. So Warwick is an all-around champion. He's tanky, he does damage, and is great for players who are new to the jungle role. But don't worry, if you play Warwick to his full potential, it can be very dangerous even in high elo. Despite how strong this champion is, he's pretty underrated at the moment, and currently his pick rate is around the 15th. Even though RingedBoost.com, Loadix, and MetaLol.net consider him S tier, he has everything in his kit that you might need, including a speed boost when champions are low, his E fears, and his Q can help you get behind the enemy, and an ult that can be used as a gap closer and a suppress. So let's talk about how you usually build Warwick, and currently he has some interesting builds, but I'll be going over the most optimal in most situations. So your starting item should be Hunter's Machete and Rejuvenation Bead, and the reason why you go Rejuvenation Bead is so you can get your Tim at really early on. Your full build should look something like Red Smite with Cinder Hulk, Ninja Tabby, Titanic Hydra, Dead Man's Plate, Spirit Visage, and Thornmail. This is the most standard build for Warwick. Of course you can change it to fit your needs of the game. For example, your core items are Red Smite with Cinder Hulk, Titanic Hydra, and Dead Man's Plate. These items will t always tend to stay the same, you can, but you can trade any of the other items for more situational items. So you can trade Ninja Tabby for Merc Treads if they have more AP, if they have Crit you can get Randuin's Omen, if they have someone like Cassiopeia you can get Adaptive Helm, and if you're and if you're feeding and your ADC is doing all the work and you have like a Kogma, you can maybe get like a Knight's Vow, and then you can also get Righteous Glory. However, there are players like Parlanax. Hopefully, I said that right. He is a challenger Warwick main who builds pretty who builds much differently than the majority of NA Warwick players. Instead of going Cinder Hulk, he grabs Warrior on most games. Now they did nerf his Q this patch which is 8.9, but I do think it's a good build you definitely need to test this out for yourself. But ideally you should build it when you are when you want to snowball really hard and do loads of damage and can afford not to be tanky. So do it if like your team lacks the damage. Now I'll be going over an interesting build that a Kareem Master player goes. So there's a player called this. Uh, which translates to Emperor of Warwick. Now he builds pretty close to the normal build, but goes Blood Razor and Boots of Mobility rather than the Cinder Hulk and Ninja Tabby. This is a really aggressive build, but if you're looking to carry or you're smurfing, you should definitely try this one out at least once or twice. This build is great for lower elos. What I like to do is rush Boots of Mobility after Timat so I can apply loads of pressure and get super fed. Usually games don't get to late game, but if they do you can switch them out for Merc or Ninja Tabbies. And Warwick isn't really the best team fighter, so it is a good strategy just to go all out and try to apply as much pressure and get the game snowballing as fast as possible. So if the game does go late and you're going against like a John, a Sorak, or Alistar, you'll pretty much get screwed over and you'll most likely lose the game. But I'll talk more about that later. As for leveling up your abilities, you should start off with taking Q for level 1, for level 2 take W, and take E for level 3. Max out W first, then max out Q second, and then lastly max out E. The reason why you max out your W first is so you can have more pressure around the map. Warwick also gains 110 attack speed against champions below 50% HP. Of course, if you get pretty fed, you can afford early boots. You might be able to max out your Q if you're going like Warrior. The reason why you don't usually max out your Q first is because the movement speed can be very helpful in the early levels. Also, since you won't be building any items that give you mana, your Q can start to cost a lot of mana, not to mention they nerfed his Q a lot, so it's not as reliable as maxing out your W. The standard runes are Precision and Sorcery going Press the Attack, Triumph, Legends, Alacrity, Coupe de Grace, Ultimate Hat, and Celerity. Warwick's runes can be debatable since other players like going Water Walking instead of Ultimate Hat, 
and it's pretty much up to preference. With my first example build, you won't have that much cooldown reduction, so I like the extra CDR on my ultimate. The Korean master player I was talking about likes to take Resolve as a secondary tree going Chrysalis and Revitalize. It's most likely because he doesn't take boots that give him a resistance and he doesn't build Cinder Hulk. The reason why you go press the attack is because it can give you some great damage when you have your W activated. Press the attack also gives your ultimate more DPS. When should you pick Warwick? Picking Warwick in the right team comp is really important since you ha since you can have a really bad game if you pick him against a team that fucks him over. I would say the most troublesome champions are supports since you want to apply lots of pressure in the early game and they can keep you from ganking bot lane which if you gank bot lane and pressure bot lane you can usually get objectives like dragon. So watch out for champions like Janna, Morgana, Alistar. Soraka is also pretty annoying but it isn't as bad as the other three. The only time where she really starts to get annoying is when it hits late game and the enemy has a good front line and then it's pretty much impossible to kill them. Support junglers can be hard to play against like Ramus, Nunu, and Ivern, but I would say that supports are a bigger threat than anything that keep you from killing their carries because then you're pretty much useless. Warwick isn't bad in mostly AD comps because his damage is mixed, with his passive, Q, and ultimate giving you some magic damage. Now, you can play aggressive and invade, so the junglers you can invade would be um, Evelyn, Twitch, and Hecarim. So I would be very careful if you do decide to invade. I would say that champions like Warwick aren't really too good at invading compared to champions like Lee Sin and Kha'Zix. It's also good to look at the state of the lanes to see if your laner is applying enough pressure for you to invade without half the enemy team showing up to kill you. Now all you have to do is look at their HP in the lane and if the lane is pushed into the enemy tower. If the minions are hitting the tower it's going to be hard for them to roam without losing at least a wave. Make sure you're looking at the map just in case if you see them go ahead and go into the jungle or disappear. If you do you need to haul ass and get out of there. Invading during your first clear is your best shot that's when, you're the, that's when they're the weakest. The reason you can invade Evelyn is because she doesn't get her invisibility to level 6 and she does not have the fastest clears not to mention she won't be able to usually use charm on you because EVE players use that ability when they first attack the camp. When you invade make sure to time your Q so if they do flash you go with them and then you screw them over even more. But of course you can always just trade flashes as well as long as you get first blood. Twitch is more of a cheeser and is actually a pretty bad jungler. If he gets even the slightest disadvantage, he's pretty much screwed over. Make sure to warn your team for the level 2 cheese. It's also good to note that Twitch avoids taking raptors early, so you can always take that. Just make sure to ward these bushes. Now, Hecarim is pretty weak in the early game and doesn't really and doesn't carry flash, so you don't have to time your Q perfectly like you would with flash. But it is important that you land your fear correctly. If you catch him out at level 2, the only escape he'll have is his ghost, which won't really do much for him. Let's talk about Warwick's early game. I think he's super strong since it's very hard to get low while clearing with him. As for the buff you want to start, I think that it really doesn't matter. You should start on the opposite side of, of the lane you want to gank. For example, your blue side and you want to gank bot first, so start blue buff. It also depends on your matchup since if you counter the enemy jungler, you could look to counter gank. For example, if you're going against like a Gragas, who's pretty weak against you. Not invadable weak, but definitely pretty weak. And you're on the blue side, you, you can assume that he's probably starting his blue buff. You can also see how likely he is going to gank depending on your top matchup. If you have a Darius and the enemy team has a Maokai, your Darius is most likely going to push in and you can expect Gragas to gank around level 3. If he doesn't gank, just ward the top river. Recall, grab a pink and place it somewhere on the bottom side of the map so you can ward for them. Of course, not every game turns out as simple as this, so always be aware of your lane situations and where your jungler has a high probability of ganking and ping the shit out of them. Early game is always the most important part of the game, and Warwick is really good at snowballing, of course, 
though if you do get behind it can be really hard to get back into the game. Always look for ganks as far as prioritizing lanes go. Just look at your laners to see which one of them is the most beneficial to gank. You also need to make sure that you're pathing to your ganks for the most efficient use of your time. Return ganking is also really useful for tilting the enemies and pushing them even further behind. If you gank the top laner and your wave isn't pushed, there's a chance that they might TP to a minion. If you wasted the flash during the first gank, you can be assured that you can kill them again. Once they TP, just make sure to warn your top laner so they're in position. If your wave is pushed up to the tower, you, you can wait in these bushes. Of Some good ganking tips is to chain CC. If you're ganking, I like to first W, get the movement speed then activate your E then Q behind them once they are feared you can ult them if they have an escape ability or flash you can wait for them to use it then ult them you can also Q minions to get in range of your E fear so mid game is pretty much the same as early game as a, as a warwick you'll want to apply pressure and catch up enemies with your W and ultimate work is pretty good at clearing objectives like dragon and baron Late game is tough for Warwick since your 5v5 is pretty bad. It depends on the team comps you're going against. I would say that usually Warwick's job is to catch out enemies with his ultimate. You have to be pretty careful since if you get pot out, you're probably going to lose the game or a major objective like Baron and Elder. If the enemy has a good frontline, your best shot is to protect your carries with your ultimate and E. But most games will be situational, sometimes you have to dive the back line and sometimes you just have to tank for your carries. Late game is important to learn, but in my opinion as a Warwick player, your job is to learn the early game. Since you want to end games but even before it hits the late game. The great thing about Warwick is that you have a suppress in your kit which is your ultimate. If the enemy jungler tries to steal Baron or you want to steal their Baron, if you can ult the enemy jungler it does suppress them for 1.5 seconds. During that time they cannot smite. However, if you do try to fear them with your E, they still can smite with that, so just be aware of that. So that's it for this Warwick guide, he is a pretty simple champion. Hopefully you learned something new, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe, like, and share for more videos. See you next time.